Thank you so much for watching this online video tutorial. Like, comment, and share, as well as subscribe to our channel at Good Better Best Online Videos for more video content. All right, great tens, welcome to today's session. We are going to have a look at empirical formula. Okay, now I touched on it a bit last week in last week's session. Basically, to summarize, it's the simplest whole number ratio. Okay, but it doesn't end there. It's the simplest whole number ratio of atoms of each element in a compound. So let's just have uh, an example again that we took off last week, okay? Because I'm not sure if everybody saw it. But let's say we had um, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Okay, now we want to find the empirical formula. We know that the um, ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, okay, is 2 is to 2. So to simplify, we just divide by 2 each, and we get 1 is to 1. And then the empirical formula of hydrogen of hydrogen peroxide is HO looks like just hydrogen oxide okay so that is just obviously looking at the molecular formula and then finding the empirical formula from there but now how do we get from the empirical formula back to the molecular formula obviously that's where the true uh, pure genius of these things comes into play okay so we've come out of learning percentage composition okay so now how do we find the empirical formula from percentage composition okay well to find the empirical formula we follow the steps okay or well, let's actually put this um put this in here as a heading so empirical formula oh that's not i empirical formula from percentage I'll use the percentage sign composition okay right so step one we assume all right we assume right a hundred grams of each substance or of the substance we always assume that there's 100 grams of it okay Second step is that we'd use the percentage amounts as amounts in grams. Because 100% percent percentage, 100 grams, percentage convert to grams, they'll be the same thing. Okay? I will work an example as well here, in just a moment. Step three, we convert grams to moles of each element all right again we've got to bring in the molar mass here then number four is we've got to find the smallest whole number ratio of each moles for each element so if we come over here we have a little bit of an example all right um let's have if we find the empirical formula of a compound that consists of uh 63 percent manganese and 37 percent oxygen okay so we assume that they are per 100 grams right so we say well for manganese um, which is 63 percent which is 63 grams and you've got oxygen which is 37 percent we'll make that 37 grams okay so now we use the formula n is equal to mass divided by molar mass which is equal to 63 divided by so molar mass of manganese I think is 55 and that'll equal around 1 comma 145 mole 
For oxygen, you've got the same thing. N is equal to M over big M, which is equal to 37 divided by 16. That should give us 2,315 mole. Okay, the reason why I've kept these numbers, the bit of decimals there, is to make the uh, simplification a little bit more accurate. So obviously now the mole ratio, let's bring another color into the mix here. And uh, bring another color into the mix here. Mole ratio of manganese to oxygen, we got 1,145 manganese is equal to 2,3125, I think, yes, 3,125. Did I write that on the previous? No, I didn't, oh, my bad. It's 2,3125, let me just erase this so we can get that number correct. Uh, there we go, 3,1,2,5. Bring this back. Okay, so if we want to bring it back here, we divide obviously which number is to the smallest between these two, the manganese one, right? So we divide both sides by one comma one four five. Okay, one comma one four five. This is one. Divide there, we'll get one is equal to two comma zero two, which is basically equal to one comma or one is to two, because that's the whole number. Remember, it's the simplest whole number ratio, so the nearest whole number, in fact, here is two and not three. So we're gonna go with one is to two. So therefore, the empirical formula all right, is MnO2. One of manganese, one of it, that's why we have M in there, just one. And we have two oxygen, so we put a two at the bottom of O. So it's M in O2. That is the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio of a substance containing 63% manganese and 37% oxygen. All right, we move on to the next section of stoichiometry uh, of the empirical formula that we just went through now. Uh, we want to go through concentrations of solutions, okay? Now, concentration is a very important uh, section in stoichiometry. Uh, it doesn't leave the syllabus um, up until grade 12, the school syllabus, though. Um, it's, cons it's very, very important, especially if any of you decide to become chemists, okay? Concentration will be something that you'll be working out um, a lot on a daily basis, okay? In your work, of course. <clears throat> So let's first define what it is, okay? The concentration of a solution is found out to be the measure um, of the amount of solute all right, uh, that is dissolved in a solvent. So we should remember what these terms such as solute and solvent is, okay? A solute is an example of solute, most famous one, sugar, all right? Solute and a solvent, all right, would be water, okay? Sugar dissolved in water, okay? Now, I, whenever I explain concentration to my students for the past five years, I've been using the Oros example, okay? Oros. Uh, if you buy a bottle of Oros off the shelf and you must pour yourself uh, a glass of pure Oros, in other when I say pure Oros, I don't mean undiluted Oros with water. You just pour it straight from the bottle into the um, cup or glass or whatever, and you drink it. It's going to be extremely sweet. It's going to possibly burn your throat because that's how sweet and acidic it is because of the high volume of concentration or high amount of concentration per volume um, that you've poured into your glass. And of course they tell you to dilute it. So if you add more water to it, what do you notice? The color starts to get slightly lighter. It's not as sweet, but it becomes more drinkable, all right? Uh, or it becomes sweeter in the nicer 
sense, you know? Um, so, that's what concentration is all about. Okay. So, if something's very highly concentrated, there's more solute than solvent. If something's less concentrated, there's more solvent than solute. All right? So, a solution, like I said, can be made less concentration less concentrated sorry and that word is called dilute by adding more solvent again you add more water which is a solvent to your oros uh, it becomes diluted okay the formula okay for calculating the concentration of solutions is known as follows c is equal to n over v in other words where c is equal to the concentration And it is measured in mole per decimeter cubed. Okay. V is volume. And that is measured in decimeters. All right. And then N, of course, is number of moles, which we know what that's measured in. It's measured in mole. All right. Now, to calculate the concentration, though, we could also calculate it in maybe one step, okay? Remember, the formula for moles is N is equal to M divided by big M, right? So, sometimes we want to calculate first the number of moles. We first want to do that and then calculate the concentration. But what happens if we combine these two formulas together? All right? Just thought I'd... Sorry, if the temptation was too great to not draw a little bit of a face there. So, sorry, let me stop messing around. We'll form a new formula called C is equal to mass divided by molar mass times V. And we'll have the mole, which is N is equal to this. So, we substituted this part for N times uh, N over big M times V will give you the concentration in one step. Okay, so that's a new concentration formula. Both are correct, okay? Of course, you can first do this and then do that. It's fine. If you don't want to waste any time, just go straight for the big daddy and then we're all good. All right. Something worth mentioning that the number of moles of the solute does not change when more solvent is added to the solution. So just because, we, let's say we have 500 milliliters of concentrated Eros <coughs> in a one liter bottle and now we add 500 milliliters of water to dilute the 500 milliliters of concentrated oros to get a liter of oros in inverted commas okay that does not change the number of moles of oros in that bottle it does not change okay concentration changes only when more solvent is added so concentration will change but the number of moles doesn't stay I mean, it doesn't decrease and it doesn't increase. It stays the same. Only time it would increase is if we added more solute in it, most probably. All right. Sometimes in your volume question, I say vo volume is measured here in decimeters cubed, but sometimes you'll get a um, volume in the question of centimeters cubed. Okay, so we need to find out how do we go from centimeters cubed to decimeters cubed okay well how do we do that is we need to divide by a thousand to get to decimeters cubed okay uh, it's the same thing because um, centimeters cubed one milliliter is equal to centimeters cubed one centimeter cubed and one liter is equal to one decimeter cubed okay so that's the conversion so uh, although we're saying decimeters what unit of measurement is decimeter decimeter is the same as a liter all right so liters so 500 decimeters 500 liters one milliliter of course is one cubic centimeter so 500 cubic centimeters is 500 milliliters thank you great teams for having a look at uh concentration with me please don't forget to like and comment as well as subscribe to our channel and uh, like and comment on this video uh, and like and subscribe to our channel where you can see other topics and other video tutorials of physics and chemistry.